The Coin Lady channel is pleased to have you back. Let's reminisce a bit, but that's not all, because today we found out some mysteries. What follows is a video in which I will share with you two stories that, in my opinion, are as complimentary as steak and spaghetti. The chief technology officer of Ripple explains the inspiration behind the currency's name, XRP, and I'll start with that. Also, check this out from Cointelegraph, I had no idea something like this was going to be released, but it is. According to this headline, recently revealed Satoshi emails contain a wealth of information on the early days of Bitcoin. I hold it, I care about its success, and I hold it even if you're not that enthusiastic about Bitcoin, which, to be honest, I am only marginally interested in. All that nonsense is appreciated. There's something I want to draw attention to that I think you'll all find amusing since it shows how foolish those Bitcoin maxi trolls are. Just so we're clear, I don't come from a financial family or background. Please do not base your investment decisions on my recommendations. I am not a financial advisor. As a hobby and for fun, I enjoy making films on YouTube regarding crypto-related subjects, I'm just an enthusiast. Here we go with the first piece. I know I've covered this ground on my channel previously, but it feels like years have passed since then. Perhaps some of you already know this, however I'm curious as to what fraction of our community is familiar with the origins of the XRP moniker. It is written as follows, peace. The decision to name the native currency of the XRP Ledger XRP was stated by David Schwartz, Ripple's chief technology officer. This was part of a Reddit rant directed against crypto users. No need to read the rest of the story, Edward Farina, head of social adoption for XRP Healthcare, just highlighted Schwartz's insight on X. I'm just going to pull this up. The thing is, this is awesome. Additionally, I will also make note of this. The name XRP did not initially apply to XRP. XNS was the original name for XRP when it was launched in June of 2012. And you know what? I don't remember the original reasoning for it anymore. I consulted David Schwartz, and he ended up answering my question in a separate video that I saw shortly after I pushed record. So, I skipped that part. Yes, XRP was formerly known as X and S, but it was renamed, and now everything makes sense. Because, you know, the XRP ledger's coding and the idea that led to it originated with a guy named Brian Fugger. Fugger had an idea for an IOU system in 2004, long before Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. I won't go into detail about this idea because it would derail the rest of the video. The name of the payment system, though, was Ripple, I believe that was four years ago. Thus, they merely appropriated the moniker in an effort to incorporate that idea into XRP. And this was before Ripple was even a corporation. In retrospect, we can see that you muddied the waters by saying, yeah, well, we already had XRP, which is where things get murky. Ripple is a component of it, as you will see. So, here's the deal, OpenCoin was a new coin, and then the company was renamed to Ripple. So now there's a cryptocurrency called Ripple, and the name of the company is Ripple as well. It was a bit of a misstep in hindsight, but hey, it was early days, so I'm not going to be too hard on them. Thereafter, it should come as no surprise that any honest business person will recognize the difference between Ripple and XRP. However, you can see the timeline displayed on your screen. I can read this out to you. A three-letter currency code is generated by adding one character to the two-letter country code of the issuing country, according to David Schwartz, who helped create XRP and the XRP ledger. Some non-US countries still use country codes, such as the US, since the US dollar has the US currency code, the European Union is represented by the country code EU. As a result, the Euro's currency code is Euro naturally, no nation has ever issued XRP with regard to assets that have not been issued by any nation. There will be no country codes supplied unless the first letter is X. For instance, while some individuals use BTC for Bitcoin, those who are concerned about standards use XBT. This is because the currency code for gold is XA, which is derived from the molecular symbol AU for gold. So, stop and consider it. To be honest, he mentioned that some people use Bitcoin right now. This was a long time ago, though. 
With everyone using Bitcoin, it's almost as if the standard has gone out the window. People are getting into it, but for now it's Bitcoin that's being used. Right now. It's not being used exclusively, as I'll mention in a moment. In any case, allow me to complete David Schwartz's sentence. Since XRP is not backed by a government, its initial character is an X, ripples are the initial term for the native asset that the ledger uses. The correct natural currency code would have been XRP, but I doubt anyone uses that term anymore. Well, I've heard about ZIPs. Since I rarely hear anyone refer to them as XRP SERPs anymore, I guess that's how old this is. To be honest, I still wouldn't call it gone. Wow, XRP SERPs was everywhere when I joined the XRP community in 2017, but these days it's almost unheard of. And I'm guessing that those who have joined in the past few years have never heard of it, but yeah, XRP, which has been lovingly referred to as deserved for quite some time here. However, Bitcoin isn't involved, it's merely XRP, cryptocurrency, or augmented reality. When you search for Bitcoin on Google, this is what comes up. If you look closely, you can see that I'm circling this very spot on the screen, the price of Bitcoin is 50,980 buckaroos, and the symbol is XBT thus, your destination is the only determinant. However, I only want to point out that they have been standards for quite a while. Ultimately, that's why XRP is called XRP, but we had some more historic stuff here and I rather enjoyed it. I think you'll like this even if you don't really care about Bitcoin. I'm not convinced that people care enough. But it is interesting. Take another look at the headline, the recently leaked Satoshi emails include a wealth of information on the early days of Bitcoin. The answer is yes. In addition, they provide a chance to mock the dimwit Bitcoin trolls that Matthew is known to harass. Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder of Bitcoin, and Marty Malini, his first collaborator, released 120 pages of their email correspondences on GitHub on February 23rd, revealing a plethora of details about the early days of Bitcoin. To that end, I shall express my satisfaction that this was accomplished for the sake of history. It seems to me to be a significant matter. It's practical, it's intriguing, and all that. It has taken me by surprise. After all this time, I had no idea there was a treasure trove like this, I mean, you're talking about emails from 13 to 15 years ago. This is pretty neat stuff, you know? If you're into cryptocurrencies, I hope you can appreciate it, even if you're not particularly enthusiastic about Bitcoin right now. This is where it all began, so I believe it's incredibly wonderful things here. If this were not to occur. Without XRP and all the other cryptocurrencies that have emerged, the cryptocurrency and blockchain communities would be in a state of perpetual uncertainty over the identity of Nakamoto. A London court lawsuit was initiated by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance against Craig Wright, who was said to be Nakamoto, using the emails that Melamine recently made public on GitHub as proof. A quick review of the emails by Cointelegraph did not reveal anything that would quickly implicate Satoshi as the email's genuine owner. Yet, the emails contain some wonderful quotations in a general vein reminiscent of Satoshi Enos, which is of great interest to historians and Bitcoin law enthusiasts. Just like the Bitcoin white paper, this is very clear and concise, while still covering all the bases. An email addressed to Mommy on June 11, 2009, seems to cast serious doubt on the long-held belief that Satoshi himself coined the term Bitcoin. Additionally, this contains a few of intriguing elements. The statement suggests that Satoshi Nakamoto is not just one person, but rather a group of people, which is an assertion that could or might not be correct. I will not understand unless there is an effort to avoid using gender. But the origin of the term cryptocurrency and its relevance to Bitcoin, or lack thereof, is what really piques my interest in this context. According to Satoshi, a person coined the term cryptocurrency, which could be a good way to describe Bitcoin. To mommy's credit, he quoted her and said it sounded better than digital P2P, cash, or peer-to-peer -peer currency, and that it sounded nice overall. All right, but they left out the most intriguing detail, which was revealed by Crypto Caesar, a chart analyst. This is significant because Satoshi Nakamoto clearly decided that, yes, it is the right phrase, and that it is indeed a cryptocurrency. In the instructional section that follows, 
the full screen will show the following, the release of Bitcoin 0.3. This decentralized digital currency was first proposed by Satoshi Nakamoto in the early days of 2010, so it's been around for a while. However, have you noticed the recent downward trend? It's been more noticeable for the past two or three years. No, according to the poisonous Bitcoin maximalists, Bitcoin is more than that, it's an asset class. That thing doesn't belong to any particular asset class. Rather than being a coin, it is an asset class. That's every other piece of garbage you can find. Is this story anything you've seen? What utter bullshit. Once again, it seems like these folks are just smelling their own farts since they're living in an echo chamber. Stupid as hell, but that's all there is to it. You dweebs, but this is what Bitcoin says. They have deceived themselves and are so toxic that they believe it. Now that Bitcoin is being argued as not being a cryptocurrency, it is actually a cryptocurrency by definition. Satoshi Nakamoto stated this in 2010 before anyone had heard of it. Crypto Caesar was bringing this to the attention of the Maxis by saying that the next time someone claims Bitcoin isn't crypto, they should show an email from Satoshi referring to it as cryptocurrency, which is true. Now, I find this amusing and enjoy making fun of these dimwits because this was not the case when I ventured into cryptocurrency in 2017. Indeed, I had never encountered this assertion made by any poisonous Bitcoin maximalist, in fact, it was the polar opposite. As of 2017, they asserted, Bitcoin was the sole cryptocurrency, and all other cryptocurrencies were inferior. Whatever else was an S-word coin, anyhow. I don't know what happened, but overnight, Bitcoin went from being the sole real cryptocurrency to just another asset class that uses cryptography as its foundation. Now, I'm confused about what happened. Is that what it does? What complete dimwits? Indeed, it's quite amusing. In any case, that's the way it is. My response was a letter in which I recounted my 2017 foray into cryptocurrency and how, at the time, Bitcoin Max had claimed that Bitcoin was the sole cryptocurrency. Yeah, a little bit, but not much, still 10% quality, 90% dog s word, was his response to me. I think he's going completely off the rails with that, and I have no idea what he's driving at. When he told me that, I'll tell you honestly. Yeah, I get that most cryptocurrencies aren't very good. But I think it could be because he brought to my attention that I'm pro-XRP, and from what I gather, he's not particularly pro-XRP. So, I don't care if people see cryptos the same way I do. However, if he says yeah, a little bit in 2017, then I'll be very interested. It would be surprising if you could, but I dare you to locate a single post by a single Bitcoin maximalist in 2017 that claims Bitcoin is not a cryptocurrency and that all other cryptocurrencies are. Please provide evidence and documentation, I'm sure you'll find it. If you can figure it out, that's okay with me. Nevertheless, we still need to locate 10 more that state the inverse, which is obviously easier said than done. In any case, that's the point. All things considered, this is fascinating, all it is is a repeat of a previous precedent. I found this entertaining, but I absolutely loathe maximalism. I believe it is very detrimental in the crypto realm, and I want to make fun of it at all times. The coin's value is irrelevant to me. Being opposed to Bitcoin is not the point. For the past three years, I've been a Bitcoin investor. In the eyes of the ignorant, it is completely foolish. The article, however, continues at this point. Satoshi's astute comprehension of anonymity, its implications, and the dangers of misinformation for Bitcoin is further demonstrated in Mommy's email correspondence. Also, you should look at this since it's intriguing. What Satoshi thought about it was this. Again, nothing similar has ever been introduced before, so I believe it's an acceptable thing to do. No one has any idea what this is. It's reasonable to be worried about this. This is the text he composed. Given the rise in popularity of Bitcoin addresses over IP addresses, I believe we should downplay the anonymity aspect. It can't be implied that it's anonymous by default. You need to exercise caution in court if you want to remain anonymous, though it is doable. Yeah. 
And so, that is the KCC Dominus, which is not entirely anonymous since it can be followed and because transactions can be linked from one account to another. So, where did this come from? That is why it is so blatantly foolish to use Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency for criminal reasons. Spelling Addy Dumb is happening again. Someone digging through the transaction history and releasing information people thought was anonymous would cause even bigger outrage, according to an email that basically predicts the rise of blockchain forensics. I believe it's a key issue, and it's clear that Satoshi was giving this some serious thought. If we haven't set expectations by advising ahead of time that you have to take measures, then you're absolutely right. Also, some people might have been misled into thinking it was anonymous when in fact it isn't. I mean, you're probably going to be very upset that you took it to the gods, aren't you? Obviously, it stinks to be you if you're still up to no good. I suppose you were wrong to engage in the unlawful activities. Therefore, I will not be met with much compassion. However, it may simply much appreciate your privacy, even if it has nothing to do with doing unlawful things. It is really vital to get the message out there. Whether the ignorant and poisonous Bitcoin maxi trolls like it or not, Bitcoin is a part of the cryptocurrency asset class. I'm not a financial advisor, you shouldn't buy or sell anything based on what I say. These are things that we now take for granted but that we simply understand. With that, the video comes to a close. Do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye for now.